Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm so excited to be participating in the Diamond Dies Falls in the Air YouTube hop. Plus, I have some news. Uh, Dee of Diamond Dies asked me today if I would become a permanent member of the design team, and I am just so thrilled. Of course I said yes immediately, and I just wanted to say thank you to all of my subscribers who made purchases at Diamond Dies and used my coupon code, thanks Christina. Um, it means the world to me, and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. i tell you the rules of the YouTube Hub. You need to be a subscriber to the Diamond Dies YouTube channel. You need to leave a comment on the Diamond Dies Fall Hop video and you need to visit each of the Diamond Dyes Design Team members' YouTube channel and view their fall hop video and leave a comment there. Diamond Dyes, as well as each of the Diamond Dyes Design Team members, will be giving away a $10 gift code to Diamond Dyes. Isn't that awesome? How generous is that? You have so many chances to win. It's fabulous. This hop is going on through October 5th, so you have over a week to participate. Um, to participate in the $10 gift card from my channel, you need to be a, a subscriber to my channel and leave a comment. The other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is that Dee is having a sale during the same period. Everything in her shop is 10% off. So in addition to that 10%, you can use the code THANKSCHRISTINA for an additional 10% plus free shipping on any orders over $35. And that's free shipping worldwide. So how great is that? Um, so go check it out. She also just posted her new Halloween dies. So you, if Halloween is a fun holiday for you, if that's something that you craft about, you need to go check it out. I checked it out and I think they are fabulous. <laughs> Let me show you the project that I did for the hop. It's this layout. And frankly, I think this is the best layout I've ever done. <laughs> I took my time with this. I started the whole thing with this little dog house, which came from a layout kit that I had. Um, and what I decided to do was to create a house, like a human house, human, quote unquote, human house, that mimicked the dog house. You know how some people have bird houses in their front lawns that look like their house? I mean, it's usually like in fancy houses. I went the other way. I went with like a house that looked like a dog house. <laughs> but I thought it came out super cute. I just drew it out um, with marker on cardstock and I used a little brown ink for the roof line. And that's how it all started. And I wanted to create a little scene here so that I could have my biscuit and my bandito peering out from behind a little window of this house. Isn't that cute? I used the Diamond Dies window set. Um, and this is an older set. This was the first set that I purchased actually from Diamond Dies. And I think it's fabulous. You can really create a scene, like a mood here. I added this pattern paper for wallpaper. I added a little bit of lace for a curtain. And then of course I wanted to use the flower box because I wanted to try my hand at making my first paper flowers. I'll be honest with you, I think these paper flowers take a lot of time. It's a very detailed dye, but the results are totally worth it. Look at the detail in those petals. You can't buy flowers like that in a store. I mean, the depth and the intricacy in those petals is just amazing. Um, so will I do it for every project? No, but for special projects like this one, absolutely, because the flowers are unbelievable. Um, so that started this scene going and I don't know if you guys saw it, but about a week ago or so, I showed a card that I made using this sky background that I just inked up. And I will put a link in the description box below to that video where I have a tutorial on how to make this cloudy sky background. For the foreground, I use the Diamond Dyes Grass Dye, and I use both the positive and the negative. This is the positive, and the negative has kind of wonky leaves, but you know, frankly, we have weeds in our yard. <laughs> The grass is not all pristine. Um, so I thought I wanted to use both to get as much texture and interest as I could in the grass. Um, I inked the edges just so you could distinguish from one layer to another and I added some foam adhesive behind some of the little strips to give extra depth. And you can see where I, you know, tuck the grass around the kind of base of the tree. The tree is one that I drew out. 
I knew the style I wanted. And now Dee has tree dyes, and I think she has a new one coming out, a spooky one. Um, but I actually didn't have time to get this project done and order that dye. So I um, just drew this out. <laughs> and again, I use my marker to edge all the edges of the tree like I did for the house so that it would have that kind of cartoony look. And I wanted a cartoony look, look not a realistic look, because I wanted to make the leaves out of buttons. Aren't they so cute? So I wanted to share how I prepped my sweet little vintage button dies from here to here. Well, actually, I guess I should start with how I made them a little more sparkly and cute, in my opinion. Um, so, uh, you know, I just used plain cardstock, and for the red ones, I put glossy accents over the top and let that dry overnight. For the orange and brown ones, I took this Folk Art Extreme Glitter paint, and Crafty Irina had shared that this actually comes out looking like it's been um, Wink of stella if you can use that as a verb. <laughs> I actually use my clear Wink of Stella on the yellow ones, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see the shimmer on that. Yeah, you can see it a little bit, but it's a little bit more subtle. This extreme glitter is actually really sparkly. Yeah, and I like that even more. Plus, you know, if you can pick this on clearance, even if you picked it up on regular price, it's two thirty versus, and I picked it up at uh, one fifty, and then it's a great deal. And if you have large areas that you want to, you know, glitter over top, you just take your paintbrush and, you know, brush it over the top, and it's super fast and it dries really fast too. So. Let me share with you guys. I'm using this embroidery thread. So it's a little thicker than regular thread. I'm using a ribbon needle because it has a really big eye. So it helps me get the thicker thread, twine, whatever, through the eye of the needle. I just cut a length off, probably about five or six inches. Take my little button. See, and that's just the right amount of thickness, in my opinion. And I keep the needle on and just tie a simple knot on the back. And then snip this off. And then what I'll do is I'll put a little glossy accent, just a dot, so that it gets secure, and then snip off the excess so that I can have a nicely finished button with a thread through. I think that came out super, super cute. I also tucked in in the grass like fallen leaves, like these little fallen button leaves. Um, I also put in a little baseball here, a little squeaky toy, newspaper squeaky toy, and a ball here. Just toys for the dogs lying around. <laughs> um, and lastly, just to add a little whimsy, I used a little pearl swirl to make it look like this leaf was just flying away in the wind. Um, so that's it. That's my project. I hope you guys have fun along the hop. I can't wait to go and watch all the other videos. Thanks for stopping by.